Yeah, okay, welcome uh, from my side. I'm Jörg Freudenstein from Germany, but um, introduced me earlier. And um, today I will show you the model on rerouting management enhanced, um, which is under the theme of uh, new content models, um, because it is something new, but um, on the other hand, it is not uh, totally new. Uh, on the other hand, because uh, something was updated, um, which already existed in Datex. Um, yeah, so we are talking about uh, this enhanced rerouting model, uh, which is now part of the current version of Datex 3.1. And as I said, uh, it improves an existing version of rerouting, which already um, is existing. Uh, the new development based on, on some extensions done in the past, uh, also from, from Germany and uh, from some, um, uh, some, some projects, uh, for example, Lisa Plus, um, not everything was adapted one by one um, because this was done by a so-called SEM project team in, in working group 17 and uh, now the Datex organization, the program support activity has um, taken over the maintenance for this part and introduced it into the current version of Datex. Um, I, will, I will start a little bit with an example uh, because I think it's, it's uh, the best way to show that. Um, we are talking about the urban sector now. This is, of course, uh, quite important. And we have some, some kind of city here. And let's say we have a route, um, we, we have a question, and uh, on this route, an incident uh, might happen. And of course, uh, what happens next is um, that you like to specify an alternative route um, to bypass the original route. This is, of course, a quite simple um, setting. And uh, of course, this kind of simple setting is already possible in, in Datex. Um, so we have a model there to do that. Uh, as you can see here on the right, it's, uh, actually this one is the, the total model of the existing uh, part in, in Datex. Um, it was developed in the early days of Datex and you have uh, quite limited and basic information how to do that, uh, as you can see. Um, you can specify uh, multiple alternatives route, um, yeah, but uh, there are limited uh, capabilities to do so. Um, now we have got some new requirements and uh, for that reason, um, things have been extended and a new model has been um, developed. For example, um, it is possible to define something like an origin area and a destination area. Um, that has to do something with the, um, the traffic flow from a source to a destination because not every uh, route is affected um, from, uh, yeah, from, from the closure or from the incident. Um, maybe you can have cars that want to go into the city center and they can uh, drive the, the way which is here uh, displayed with the green arrow. And um, so they are not passing the destination area you probably know that in an ideal case uh, from your navigation systems where you're coming from and where you're going to and uh, cars which will not pass the destination area for example uh, might not be affected. So you can define uh, several origin areas and several destination areas in the form of areas or points if you like to do so. Of course you can have uh, several alternative routes and um, what is also new in the new model um, you can adapt some uh, special characteristics for these routes. Uh, for example, you can um, uh, say that uh, certain types of cars are allowed or not allowed on the one or other route, and you can also weight them in, in uh, terms of percentage. Um, for example, if you like to route the cars in a proportion of 80% of the one way and 20% the other way uh, for not to overcrowd the um, alternative route. Uh, you can do that with a new model. Um, now, this is part of the new model. Um, it's, uh, I think I have three uh, slides from uh, that because it's hard to display that on, on one slide. Um, and what you can see here is you have, an, uh, yeah, you have a class which is called a rerouting management enhanced with some attributes on, on the measure as such. And then, um, as I already explained, the, the origin and the destination. Of course, these are optional features. Uh, you don't need to use them if you don't like to do so. 
um, you can attach multiple origins and multiple destinations. Um, and these are kind of, of triggers to, to trigger this uh, event and to uh, get the cars on the right uh, track at the end. And of course, um, you have got something which is called a root, or in this case, it's called root description. Um, you can uh, distinct between the original root and uh, one to many alternative root, was, of course, which you may be find with uh, a couple of information, of course, um, about entries, actions, uh, exits, uh, junctions. Um, there's a C missing. And um, on, on the, if the rerouting is signed or not, uh, you can specify all these things, of course. Um, then we have a part uh, where, again, you can find this class root descriptions on the left side, and then we have a couple of surrounding information on the root. Um, actually, one of the most important is um, the location reference, um, which is done by the itinerary class. Itinerary um, yeah, is, is a kind of uh, georeference, which is especially uh, composed for, for roots. It is some kind of root at the end. And uh, so we use this existing class. Um, I do not explain anything about the, the Jira reference mechanisms here because this is um, a DATEX, DATEX standard feature. Um, everything can be used, which is available in DATEX uh, and the itinerary object is uh, yeah, the best thing to use for that. Um, then we attach, uh, can attach some, some more information, for example, about the traffic status. If we already know that something is um, stationary or queuing or whatever, we can uh, describe that. We can attach uh, travel time information, which is also very important and was not possible in the past. Um, yeah, so you can easily say, um, how long will it take you to take uh, all the different routes? And then we have this class route allocation. Um, which is a class to, uh, yeah, to, to specify certain vehicle characteristics, all sort of vehicle characteristics, not only the vehicle type, but you can also distinguish between, uh, uh, for example, the, the fuel type and extinguish between electric or other things. Um, you can share on emissions um, characteristics of the vehicles or their weight uh, or their dimensions or whatever. And you can define, um, as explained before, these proportions between the different uh, vehicle characteristic types. Um, one thing which was also attached uh, to this new model uh, are some measurements, additional measurements. Uh, for example, you like to promote uh, certain alternative routes and to, to do things like uh, open extra lanes or uh, doing something with the traffic signals, extending the green times, making green waves, etc. to have a better traffic flow on, on certain alternative routes. Uh, then you can do that uh, because the model has uh, uh, some classes which uh, will help you to do that. And um, that's how it looks like. Um, the root capacity measure, management measures um, where you can uh, improve these things. Um, again, the class root description known from the slides before and um, the classes here in the, in the lower direction are uh, the classes where you can define these um, additional things. Um, you can also define some advisory speed, uh, some, some default green time and uh, cycle lengths of, of the uh, traffic signals, if you like, uh, to do these things. Um, in this model, which is now in, in version 3.1, there are a couple of, of measures defined, which you can select. Usually they are um, measures to increase capacity and to, to uh, make uh, traffic flow better. But um, already at that stage, we have some comments that uh, we also should introduce uh, measures which are the other way around um, because sometimes uh, routes maybe um, have decreased uh, capacity or, or lanes are closed or whatever or an additional parking ban is installed. And so there are already comments um, to um, yeah, to, to make the number of measures a little bit more in, in this direction also. And finally, on the, on the lower part of this section, we have um, the possibility to point on very specific traffic lights which are affected. So you can define traffic lights and say this traffic light is, is changed. Um, and uh, especially there is a reference to another uh, model which is called a traffic signal publication. Um, where you can do that even more in detail and that will be explained uh, by Ian 
in a few seconds. Um, I think I have two more slides or something like that. Um, on the one hand, here is how it looks like in uh, our Datex um, project manager. Um, you can see that it is a new namespace, rerouting management enhanced with all the classes and things which are needed. It's not a publication as such because it uses the situation publication and the network management. If you are familiar with Datex, uh, this will maybe help you to understand a little bit. And um, for this reason, it's um, located in the extension package because um, the original rerouting class still exists in Datex. And um, this class here is um, yeah, located in, in the extension and can be used as well as a type of a network management. Um, last information on this topic, um, the model is standardized in part eight of our Datex series. Uh, in April uh, last year is, is the date of, of the standard. This is how the content of the standard looks like. And um, here you can see we have one chapter about the content I talked about, the rerouting management enhanced. Um, but in the standard, we have two more. We have um, one chapter about Fersen, further urban extensions. Uh, we do not present here because they are really sm of smaller nature, even if the um, content uh, here uh, seems to be larger. But um, at, at the end, these are some extensions on um, especially enumerations to foster urban usage um, for this kind of things. And the third one is um, TM plan which goes into the section of, of really strategic route planning and, and traffic management plans. And um, that will be explained in, in the after following section, not in the next one, because this is Ian on traffic signals, but in the next section afterwards, uh, Fabrizio will talk about that. I think, yes, that's from me. And I give up to Ian. Yeah, so I believe this is the last in this before the break, and this is not a long one. I've been asked to tell you about the traffic signal timing and configuration models. Uh, I must admit I haven't implemented one, this one myself, but I, I, I'm familiar enough that I can give you a flavor of it. So I'm going to explain a little bit about the origin and status. Uh, it's a bit different uh, from the normal Datex2 content. Uh, and well, yeah, you can see those are the things I'm going to talk about. Just go straight in. This busy slide is trying to just explain your kind of mention, but let me also emphasize that there's a different origin for this model compared to the other things we've been talking about earlier today, like road traffic data, VMS. Here I'm trying to show two organization streams on the left. SEN groups on the right, the Datex project organization. And normally the Datex project organization create the models so, uh, 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 and giving them as input material to the SEN process that then produces the SEN standards and specs. This one was the other way around. SEN, uh, a project team working with and reporting to SEN groups produced the model and the specification. It wasn't originally a priority for the Datex2 project, but now that the spec exists, last year when it was published, the Datex2 organization decided we will adopt it and we will incorporate it in version 3.1, initially without modification. And in future, we will take responsibility for its maintenance and, its, and, and try to improve its design um, and evolve it in future. So again, it's a content spec. Uh, if you were here earlier, same idea, it's a UML model and there are XML schemas. For this one, actually, due to a choice in the modeling, there are only XML schemas. It's not possible to automatically use uh, Datex tooling to create JSON schemas for these ones. You could hand, do it by hand. Um, and that's something that we, we uh, the Datex uh, guys, I think, will look to improve. Um, in terms of its shape in the tree of releases, it's in 3.1, but under the extensions uh, package. It's there to use as an extension. And that's a different way of showing the same thing. It's in, it's in the extension package. 
So similar, similar to road traffic data, namespace dependencies, if you want to use traffic signals as a module, all you need is uh, location referencing and common. You can use it independently from, from VMS, road traffic data, all the other ones presented today. You just need the traffic signals, location referencing, common. Keep the application small. Now it's content. It's really only, and I mean the name traffic signals might mislead into thinking that it is more than it is. It's only at the moment a publication about uh, the static configuration and geometry of uh, traffic signals at intersections. That's the map data publication. And a, pu a dynamic publication with signal phase and timing information. So it's not totally a general purpose traffic signals model. For those of you familiar with cooperative ITS uh, standards, uh, you may have come across the SPAT and MAP uh, specifications. And basically this is the same kind of content. Now, um, if you're implementing cooperative ITS and you're only going between the traffic controller and vehicles, and you'd be, that you'd be using the, the standardized cooperative ITS messages, the SPAT and MAP messages, and you wouldn't need DATEX2 for this. But if you want to share things a bit more widely, you know, you get the same content out to a wider range of actors, a wider range of um, technologies and places, then the DATEX2 modeling of this could be useful. That was the thinking behind the creation of this by the SEND project team. Um, just quickly point out that this isn't the only traffic signal related model uh, that's been created with DATEX2. Uh, it is the one that's so far been adopted by the project and included in what we publish, but there are other things. For example, there's a traffic signal status publication created DATEX2 version 2.3 um, as a, as a, a, a DATEX2 rendering of the, of the UK UTMC center to center traffic signals model. It is a more general purpose model and it's also available. Um, but that's just, um, yeah, that's just an extension that has been submitted to, to the website. It doesn't have any status within the, the project. Okay, a quick look inside just to give you a flavor of the kinds of contents that exist. Um, map data which you find in a map data publication. It's all about intersections, their geometry, the roads involved there, um, the signal heads, their, their locations, uh, restrictions that you could have, such as uh, you know, um, vehicle class specific restrictions implemented with the signals. And under geometry, I'm not going to go into details, but there's a big, set of information that you can use to specify the geometry of the layout at the signals. Um, uh, yeah, underneath generic lane, for example, a huge amount of detail you can use to specify how a lane is configured with respect to the intersection. Uh, you have this down in the bottom left, you have this node set thing where you can explain Give, really give the detail of, 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 of the path of a set of nodes of a lane approaching or leaving the, the intersection. Um, on the dynamic side, you have the state. So you have, you started to describe the stages that exist. Um, and well, not that exist, the, the stages that are really happening. Um, wh where are we through, through, through the states of, of the timing? Uh, where are we in terms of stages and phases? And down at the bottom middle, you can see the time change details. You're really talking about um, the seconds. And you can use this stuff to, to describe current, and you can use it to describe future, the near future. So that's all I want to show about the uh, nature of the content. I want to talk finally about some amendments that are coming. In release 3.2, which we're planning to be in the spring, we will fix a bug that uh, the DATEX project organization found with, within the SEN specification. Actually, it's serious enough to prevent the, the use, um, although it's simple to fix. It's just that on this diagram, you see on the right, the dynamic things, and they depend on 
the static things, the map, the map data, the cycle phase and timing data depends on the map data. And there's this construct where there's a reference um, and in the DTX mechanisms, the, the wrong stereotypes used in that class. So that's, that's just a technical detail, but it, it turns out that, that you, you, you can make one change in the model and you get the correct linking between the XML of the um, signal phase and timing, the dynamic stuff, and the XML of the, um, of the, of the map data. Just now they would, they would both validate separately, but when you came to link them together, it, you would have an issue. Uh, so we, we, we will fix that. Um, in subsequent release, we have noted various areas that we would like to um, improve this design. For example, to enable the automatic JSON schema generation. And uh, so these are all on our roadmap. And that's where I'm going to end the quick tour of the traffic signals models. Well, thank you, Ian. Um, I, uh, I see that there are, uh, there was one question uh, raised by Susan Hoatley, and that was about the, uh, the, the applica applicability of traffic management measures um, uh, now of VMS publication in relation to traffic management measures. And in general, one should understand that um, the VMS publication is dedicated to uh, informing you how the measure is represented on uh, the VMS uh, display. And um, the measure itself should, uh, uh, we, we don't uh, oblige anyone, but should be uh, published in uh, in a different publication type. Uh, that's usually a situation publication of the type network management, where you provide the the details of the of the detour and so on. So uh, uh, there is a relationship, of course, but um, uh, and there is also a hook in the uh, the display in the the traffic situation publication to the VMS usage to refer to how this is displayed on the VMS. But the VMS publication itself should not be considered as the traffic measure uh, taken publication. It is just the way how it is displayed on that specific VMS. Mm -hmm.